and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And in this particular video, I want to talk about specifically the mathematics of projectile motion and ask the question, why is the range maximum at 45 degrees? And also, can you get the same range for two different angles? And why is it so mathematically speaking? If you don't understand projectile motions, I strongly urge you to have a look at my video that introduces projectile motions before you look at this particular video. So let's talk uh, briefly about this situation where we have an object that is launched at the same vertical height as where it lands. And so, as you know, that look at this particular problem, you need to set everything out. And so what we do is we look at the vertical and we look at the horizontal and we set everything out. And so what we have is we have V, U, A, R and T and we have V av over here, R and T over here. Now, unlike my previous video where I'm going to give specific values, I'm only going to use variables. So in this situation, because I'm using a symmetrical situation, the initial velocity vertically will be the same as the final velocity vertically in the opposite direction. So my initial velocity vertically, we're going to be equal to be V and we're going to make that equal to the sine of the unknown angle that we don't know. The acceleration I'm going to simply leave as the acceleration due to gravity, which is G. My displacement, of course, is zero and my time is just going to be T. My final velocity, of course, is going to be V sine theta as well, but it's in the opposite direction, so it's going to be negative. Horizontally, I'm going to have V cosine angle, and R, of course, is Rx, which I don't know, and T is that. Because we're interested in the total range, I'm going to use all these variables to develop an equation that has Rx as our subject. And so the first thing I need to do is look at the vertical situation. One of the things that ties these two together is the time. So what I'm going to do is do an equation related to time. Now I could use V equals U plus AT. I could, so I'll do that one. So V equals U plus AT. And I know that the final velocity, of course, is negative V sine theta. My initial velocity is V sine theta. And my acceleration, of course, is equal to negative g and multiplied by t. Now, if I work out what t is, you'll see that my t now ends up being negative 2v sine theta, because I throw that on the other side. I divide that by negative g, and of course, that means my times just becomes 2v sine theta over G. So there's an expression for time. And of course, I'm going to substitute that in over here. And my range, of course, is equal to V in the horizontal multiplied by time. And my V in the horizontal is equal to V cosine theta. My time, with which you just established, is equal to 2V sine theta over G. And so now my range is equal to, if I clean that up, you can clearly see I have 2 V squared multiplied by the cosine of the angle multiplied by the sine of the angle over G. Now, the first thing you need to realize is that if I have an angle and I have the cosine, of the angle and the sine of the angle is that, that the angles are supplementary. So if I have the cosine of an angle, well, that is equal to the sine of 90 minus the angle and vice versa. So in other words, I can replace these. So for example, if the angle here is 20, so I have the cosine of 20 over here multiplied by the sine of 20 over here, then I'm going to get the same answer as if I have the cosine of 70 multiplied by the sine of 70, because they replace and they swap over. So in other words, as long as the angles are supplementary, you're going to get exactly the same range. So in other words, if I fire off my object over here at an angle of, let's say, 30 degrees, then the answer here will be exactly the same if I replace that with 60 degrees. 
If I fire this up at 10 degrees, then the answer will be the same as if I fire it off at 80 degrees. Now the times will not be the same because the time here is totally dependent on the sign of the angle. So for example, when someone throws a ball, they can throw it, let's say, um, two paths. They can throw it like so, and they can throw it like so, and they have exactly the same range and the angles will be supplementary. But clearly the one that goes at a higher path will take much longer. And that's why, for example, in baseball, they throw the balls flat because they want the smallest amount of time taking place. In cricket as well, they're going to throw it flat. So that gives us that issue. But what about the maximum range? Well, first of all, let's clean this up. Two cosine theta multiplied by the sine of theta multiplied by v squared over g. What is 2 cosine theta sine theta? Well, that is equal to the sine of 2 theta multiplied by v squared over g. Now, why is this significant? Well, you all should know that the sine of this angle can only be equal to a maximum of 1. That's only true when 2 theta is 90. So therefore, theta must equal 45. Any other angle will mean that this value here is less than 90, which means this value overall is less than 1, and that reduces the Rx. So therefore, theta must equal 45 degrees for Rx to be a maximum. And there you have it. Mathematically, why 45 degrees gives you a maximum range. And also, why any other angle will have a alternate angle to give you the same range, which will be less than the maximum range. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.